Every golfer, from you to the world's best players, side bend and move the upper body laterally. But the secret sauce between what you do and what they do is how and when that occurs. And that's what today's video is all about. Meet Richard, a 56 year old lifelong golfer who was playing off scratch at the beginning of 2019, describing his game as ignorantly good. Meaning he didn't have a lot of technical understanding of the swing and relied on his athleticism to get it around. All was good. Then the world shut down. In an attempt to keep his game sharp, he set up a practice station at the house and started recording his swing to work on the one thing that he had always heard he needed more of, side bend. That led to some light tinkering as he called it, which eventually led getting on YouTube and going down every rabbit hole he had found pertaining to side bend and the pivot. Videos, tutorials, tips, tricks, you name it, Richard said he watched it all. And with each click, his athletically ignorant good swing morphed into a pieced out dumpster fire of conflicting concepts. Standing at the crossroads of information overload and performance paralysis, Rich said he was just a couple more bad rounds away from being a double digit golfer again. But here's the kicker. As much as his game slipping was a punch to the gut, it was the new jolts of lower back pain that really had his alarm bells ringing. So yeah, real injury piling on to the insult of his worsening game. Before he came to the Athletic Motion Golf Club last fall, he had never had a swing measured on 3D, which he said was the only reason he kept his appointment on the books. He laid it out for us as clear as day. Hitting a bunch of balls, he said, isn't something I can physically do right now. But I do want to find out three things before I leave. And when he was down in the basement grinding away trying to improve his side bend, his daughter would give him a hard time saying he was making a cheerleader move. Now, if you don't know what that is, don't worry. We had no idea what it was either. So this is how Rich demonstrated the cheerleader move and how he described it. He said, it's swaying the center of the chest forward away from my pelvis. This puts me in right side bend in the transition, which shallows the club and helps me rotate. What Rich is talking about is a metric in gears called chest sway. This is a metric only measuring the movement of the chest in the lateral direction. And it's only relative to the target line, not the body. Meaning it doesn't tell you what the body's doing to generate these numbers. And the move Rich was mimicking is the move he caught wind of online as what's needed in order to create this chest sway metric you're seeing from this major champion. He'd been at this for almost six months when we saw him and reckons this is the reason for his increasing back pain. To better show what Rich and many golfers have been trying to do, we're gonna borrow a video from the Move You Instagram channel. Here you can see the model demonstrating a really clear example of what Rich's daughter infamously now calls his cheerleader move. The four keys to note here are, the chest does in fact sway forward. Doing this causes the center of your chest to sway out and away from the center of your pelvis. As the chest sways in one direction, the spine side bends in the opposite direction. This movement is always demonstrated when the spine is moving in only one of its three planes of movement. So back to Richard's first question, do good players really do this cheerleader move? Well, let's look at some really good players and find out. First up is Rory. Take a close look as his chest sways behind his pelvis at the end of his transition, i.e. the top of his swing. And that's something worth emphasizing here for clarity. The transition is over at the top of the swing, which is marked when the club changes directions. The club changing directions is the last thing to transition. The pelvis, torso, shoulders, arms, pressure, weight, etc., all transition from backswing to downswing before the club changes direction. Everything that happens from this point on is happening in the downswing. As we watch Rory start down, his chest seems to leap out ahead of his pelvis. This visual, especially in 2D, looks like the chest is charging forward out and away from the pelvis, the cheerleader move. But is that really what's happening? To find out, we need to move the camera. Let's add a second view here on the right of your screen. In this view, we're gonna lock the camera square to the dead center of his pelvis. This is the only way to see how the chest moves relative to the pelvis. If you wanna accurately see how something moves on video, the camera has to move with what you're trying to see. The camera doesn't move, you're gonna be fooled by what it shows you. This is a great example of that deception. Here at the top, on the left side of your screen, it looks like his chest has swayed behind the center of his pelvis. But here on the right, with the camera dead square to his pelvis, you can clearly see his chest is in fact tilted out and away from his pelvis. Eight degrees worth of tilt, just to put a number on it. 
What we showed Richard next had him shaking his head in disgust. Worlds are colliding! <laughs> As Rory makes his way down to left arm parallel, on the left it looks like his chest has swayed in front of or out and away from his pelvis, Rich's cheerleader move. But on the right, you can clearly see what happened. His chest actually moved in closer towards the center of his pelvis. His chest now sitting right back on top of the center of his pelvis, the opposite of the cheerleader move. Oh, and Rory's spine here is still in 30 degrees of left side bend, not right side bend the cheerleader move would have him in. We started and stopped at Rory's swing with Rich because that's the swing he said he had been studying the most. But let's look at how this plays out in a very different swing style. I think everyone would consider DJ as having a pretty different swing compared to Rory's. So this is him at the top. And this is him at that same left arm parallel spot in his downswing that we just saw Rory. And just like with Rory, he's also not cheerleading his chest out and away from his pelvis. It's moving back in towards the center of his pelvis. The reality of chest sway for the players who do it, this look is created by a static 2D camera angle. The spine is also moving in towards the center of the pelvis, not out and away from it. The spine is in lead side bend, not trail side bend. And this movement is heavily influenced by the spine's other two planes of motion, rotation and flexion. So the answer to Rich's first question is no. We have yet to see a tour player who does the cheerleader move. Rich phrased his second question in a really important way, because there's side bend, then there's side bend from the spine. You're looking at Rich in right side bend on both sides of your screen. In fact, you can see he's in exactly 39.6 degrees on both sides of your screen. But you can also see these side bends look nothing alike. That's because 3D systems typically measure side bend based on how much movement there is away from horizontal. However, that measurement does not tell you how the movement was created. So despite tilting his chest the exact same amount on each side of your screen, it's easy to see he did it in two completely different ways. On the left, we asked Richard to keep his pelvis as level as possible while reaching down the side of his leg as far as he could. The goal being to only create side bend from the spine. On the right, we had him do the opposite by trying his best to keep his spine as straight as possible while only tilting the pelvis. There's a lot of weight to the upper body, so keeping the spine straight is virtually impossible when you tilt the pelvis more than just a handful of degrees. So you should be asking how much of these side bend numbers are actually coming from the spine in each of these examples. For that, we need to know one more metric, pelvis side bend. Subtracting pelvis side bend from the rib cage side bend tells us how much side bend is coming from the spine itself. Gears does this for us in real time with this spine side bend number. On the left, Rich was grimacing to put himself into this 34 degrees of spinal side bend, also called thoracolumbar side bend. But on the right, he got 23 degrees, trying not to bend his thoracolumbar spine at all. He said he felt like he could stay in this position all day, but said the version on the left was quite uncomfortable. This is the worst. <laughs> And there's a good reason for that. Our thoracic and lumbar spines are designed to move in six directions. Bend forward, bend backwards, bend right, bend left. Rotate right and rotate left. Both sections of the spine can do all six of these to some degree. The T-spine is structurally designed to excel at rotation while the lumbar is structurally limited in its ability to rotate. The lumbar, however, is king at flexing and extending, and both share similar abilities to side bend. But a key point to remember is, if you max out one of these movements, you limit your spine's ability to move in the other directions. That's important to understand as golfers, because our spines are always moving in three of these directions at the same time. So it's more of a balancing act for how well we turn all three of these dials, not how far we can turn one of them, because that can come at a pretty heavy price. Like Richard, I didn't have any back issues prior to going down the side bend rabbit hole years ago. In less than a year's time, I went from a healthy spine to this, all because I kept cranking that side bend dial farther and farther to the right. I was playing in a qualifier when my back blew out. A few days later, I was here. Sean's back hasn't had it any easier. He has herniated discs from being hit by a drunk driver estimated to be traveling at nearly 100 miles an hour. Learning as much as we possibly could 
about how to move the spine as safely as possible has been a necessary passion of ours for many years. If you take nothing else from this video, please pay close attention to the ranges of motion you're about to see from these pros. While Sean had no control over his injuries, I'm certain that if I'd have known about this information back then, I'd have been able to save my back. So let's look at some familiar swings now to show that balancing act we mentioned earlier and how it comes together at an elite level. We'll start again with Roy focusing on his thoracolumbar movements with a seven iron. Along with a video to show you where he is in the swing, you'll also see his numbers from his spine as it moves. The camera will stay fixed perpendicular to his pelvis, so the only movement you'll see will be coming from his spine isolated from the tilting and turning of his pelvis. This is how his spine is oriented here at checkpoint one. As he moves into checkpoint two, notice how he starts swapping flexion for side bend and rotation. This is the balancing act. Moving his dials like this is what allows him to maintain the spine angle he had it set up. This is how he turns around his spine. He's not diving his left shoulder down nor lifting it up. He's just turning his shoulders basically 90 degrees around the angle he established it set up. But to do that, all three of his dials have to move. Here at checkpoint three, his spine is now moved into extension, making way for his higher than average rotation. At the end of his transition here at the top of his swing, notice how he loses a little bit of his left side bend as he continues to extend and rotate. As he moves down to here at checkpoint four and a half, we'll call it, his rotation hasn't really changed. His pelvis is rotating his whole body, but his spine rotation hasn't really changed from where it was at the top of his swing. He's also increased his left side bend the opposite of the cheerleader move, but look at which dial he's turned the most. He's flexed his spine forward more than 20 degrees in this tiny window of time. As he gets to checkpoint five, he adds another 20 plus degrees of flexion with still very little changes in rotation and side bend. So from the top of his swing to here, he's moved his flexion dial over 40 degrees while barely touching his rotation and side bend dials. It's also important to point out that by here, both his upper and lower bodies are moving up. Let me repeat that. They're moving up as he's flexing his spine forward. His centers are not lowering and squatting. They are moving up. So adding flexion like he's doing here does not mean dropping your chest closer to the ground. Here at checkpoint six, the start of his delivery, he adds the biggest move to his flexion dial, which results in a big loss of rotation and side bend. But notice his spine is still rotated closed quite a bit and he's still in left side bend here this late in his downswing. As he reaches impact, he's now losing some of that flexion while also losing more rotation and side bend. He's now in right side bend, very close to the same amount he started with at address. So back to Rich's second question, how much side bend from the spine do good players have? You're looking at one of the most explosive and dynamic players in the history of professional golf. His spine is in just 14 degrees of side bend here at Impact. He's definitely capable of way more, and so is Rich for that matter, but more or your max is clearly not necessary or required. As Rory moves to checkpoint eight, this is usually where you'll see players hit their top number for side bend in their swings. It's also where they'll balance that out with very little rotation and flexion at the spine. And lastly, this is how things move as he takes his club up to his finish. Based on loads of comments we've seen over the years, many golfers are under the impression that all these spinal movements should be limited to coming from the T-spine, the thoracic spine. Every spine surgeon we've had the benefit of learning from over the years has told us that's a fantasy. Your thoracolumbar spine bends, flexes, and rotates along its length. You don't have the ability to turn off sections of your spine during high-speed athletic motions like the golf swing, nor would you want to. That's why it's important to understand these movements so you don't go bouncing your spine into unsafe ranges like I did. But for those of you interested in seeing only his thoracic spine side bend, here are those movements. Impact is also where we see a lot of inaccurate guesses being made about side bend. We see a lot of lines like this drawn to note how much thoracic side bend a player looks like he has here at Impact. But look at how far from reality these lines are. And the reason these numbers are so far off is because you're mostly seeing the flexion of the spine, not its side bend. It's the natural shape of the spine, which we'll talk about more in a minute, that creates this deceiving look. To accurately see side bend, the camera needs to be located 90 degrees to the T-spine like we've done for you here with Roy. 
which makes things look quite a bit different than from that down the line view. Next up is DJ's seven iron swing. CP1, he has nearly an identical amount of side bend you saw with Rory. At CP2, he's also moving from right side bend to left side bend. At three, he's dialing up more side bend and rotation as he's dialing down the flexion, just like you saw from Rory. At the top, he's about three degrees different in side bend with a six degree difference in extension compared to Rory. Their biggest difference here is rotation with DJ being more in the normal range we typically see from pros. And here at 4.5, DJ has also increased his left side bend, the opposite of what Rich and many others are working on. By CP5, he's dialing up an impressive 37 degrees of flexion. And just like with Rory, both his upper and lower bodies are working up, not down here. At CP6, and unlike Rory, he's in three degrees of right side bend at the start of his delivery but still increasing flex and still close with his rotation. At impact, he's at the same amount of side bend as you saw from Rory, 14 degrees. At eight, DJ hits his high number for side bend like you saw with Rory. And this is really the only point in the swing where you have a decent chance to see the spines side bend from a good down the line camera angle. And here's a quick look at DJ's thoracic only side bend movements. Now let's look at these guys' side bend numbers with their driver. From one to two, they both go from right side bend to left side bend. From two to three, both increase their left side bends. They both have a small decrease in left side bend after transition, but by 4.5, they've ramped it back up. Even with driver, both are still doing the opposite of the cheerleader move. Both decrease here at five, and by the time they hit the start of their delivery, both are now in right side bend. As they both reach impact, they again have identical side bend numbers like they did with their seven irons. Pretty amazing giving all their physical and stylistic differences. This is a good example of what we mean when we say these guys measure out to do so many things very similarly despite how they look doing it. Then they add more right side bend going into eight and then more style differences here as they finish. Now let's look at two LPGA major champs hitting their drivers. And like Rory and DJ, these ladies are also 2D chess players with very different looking swings and physical dimensions. But let's see if they have any differences in their side bend patterns. Both move from right side to left side bend from one to two. Both dial up more left side bend into three. After transition, Nelly nets no change while Lydia has a small decrease like we saw with Rory and DJ. But true to what we've already seen, both dial up more left side bend at 4.5. At five, both decrease a small amount. At six, they're both in identical amounts of right side bend. At touch, they're not only identical to each other, but they're also in the same amount of right side bend we just saw with Rory and DJ with their drivers. Insane considering how different all four of these players are physically and stylistically. Nothing out of the ordinary here at eight. Then as they finish, I'll queue up two more major champions for you. Our last two guys are two current reigning major champions. They're also hitting driver, and they also have different swing styles and physical dimensions from the other players in the video. No differences here at the start with both guys moving from right side to left side bend by shaft parallel. More left side bend at lead arm parallel. Not much of a change as they transition and reach the tops of their swings. These are our first two players who haven't had noticeable increases from four to four and a half. I should also point out that these two guys are the first two players we've seen who don't 2D sway their chest out in front of their pelvis like the other players did. Both are decreasing into five as we've seen everyone else do. Both reach delivery with 10 degrees of right side bend. And here at impact, again, that familiar 24 degrees of right side bend. So you've just seen six major champions, six very different players, six very different looking swings, all side bending the same amount here at Impact. Last question Richard had for us was a good one. So let's take a look at some published ranges that match what we see in the field. 
it probably won't be a surprise to learn that your maximal range of motion for thoracolumbar side bending occurs between the ages of two through your teens. That's also why so many swing ideas and concepts that seem to work for junior golfers don't really translate well for the rest of us. That range takes a pretty big drop for those of us in our mid-30s to mid-50s. And if you need more proof that father time is undefeated, you experienced golfers 60 years and older can expect that number to drop even farther. Several factors will influence these numbers, things like injuries, conditioning, or the size of that spare tire you may or may not have. But these ranges are pretty good guidelines from what you can reasonably expect out of your spine. Measuring your ability to side bend is pretty straightforward. All you need is a goniometer and a friend with a keen eye for accuracy. We've used this method in the past. It's simple and relatively easy to do. But with gears, we can be even more precise and track the numbers in real time, which brings us back to Richard. Remember when he was tilting from his hips, trying not to bend from his spine at all? How easy he said that was for him to do. What felt straight to him was actually 23 degrees of spine bend on top of a tilted pelvis. So what felt like no side bend from his spine put him right in the range we saw from all those major champs with their driver at impact. And more than what we saw from Rory and DJ with their seven irons. Even Sean and I, with two blown out backs, can side bend our spines close to 40 degrees, which is way more than enough for the golf swing. We hope you use this information as a filter for what you see on video. The camera is a great tool so long as you understand what it can and cannot show you. Things don't tend to go well when you start from the wrong concept. The spine's natural curve is a good example of that. A healthy spine has an outward curve to it called kyphosis. When you rotate an object with a curve in it, like your spine, in front of a fixed camera, it creates the illusion of side bend. And it can even come off as looking like Rich's cheerleader move. The movement you're seeing here is 100% pure rotation with no flexion extension or side bend in either direction. These little shark fin looking bones on each of your vertebrae are called the spinous process and what we see when the spine moves. So if you put dots or pieces of tape on these guys, this is the curve those dots would show on a shirt or on your skin. So zero side bend suddenly looks like side bend. Then if you forward bend the spine, like you'd see around lead arm parallel in the downswing, and then put it in left side bend, not right side bend, but left side bend, like you'd also see in a good swing, that cheerleader curve to the right now looks even more pronounced. But as you can see, there is zero right side bend here. You're just being fooled by the spine's kyphosis and rotation. And to compound the deception even further, if the camera is all from the center line of your spine at all, which it certainly will be if you're recording a swing, you're going to get an even grosser misrepresentation of what the spine is doing. We introduced the movement dials to highlight the individual simultaneous movements that make up what you see in great swings. We showed the dials to cement the concept, but they aren't something you need to think about during your swing. The practical application is much simpler. For your backswing, just visualize a box framing your torso as set up. You'll athletically adjust your dials correctly by just turning inside this box. Years ago, we saw more golfers lifting their torsos up and out of the box. Nowadays, we see way more golfers diving their torsos down below the box. The explanation is always an attempt to dive into early lead side bend in an effort to point the shoulders at the golf ball. That's again something none of these pros or any of the other pros we have numbers on do. Maxing out your lead side bend early also limits your ability to turn. So again, just picture yourself turning inside your box. In transition or downswing, none of the golfers you saw today or anywhere in our database actually do Rich's cheerleader move. That means none of those players use chest sway or bouncing into right side bend to shallow the club. We're not saying it's impossible to do those things. We're just saying we haven't seen any good players do it. But if you need more information on how to shallow the club, we went into detail on how great players do it in our pros versus ams video on shallowing. As you reach impact, the amount of side bend needed from your spine isn't as much as many golfers like Rich tell us they've been trying to achieve. The key is making sure you're utilizing your pelvis's tilt to take a lot of the burden off your spine. The goal at impact is to have your overall torso tilt relative to the ground match your torso rotation. Meaning if your chest is 24 degrees open at impact, make sure your chest is in 24 degrees of side bend. 
That can be done with 12 degrees of pelvic side bend and 12 degrees of spine side bend. Just know that it all shouldn't come from your spine. Because of the amount of information that we needed to cover in this video, we decided to put the drills that we had Richard do on his lesson in a separate video. So if you'd like to see those drills that got Richard's game back on track, which I'm happy to report he's now back to a four handicap and doing it all pain free, make sure to click on the link in the first pinned comment below. Thank you for watching and letting us share with you what we've learned about side bend and chest sway over the years. If our videos have helped you at all, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps us out a bunch. Also, if there's something that we covered that wasn't quite clear, or maybe you have a question about something we didn't cover, please don't hesitate to ask down in the comments section below. We'll see you all in the next video.